Hello everybody and welcome back to another day in the ever so totally accurate history classroom of none other than Star Snipe. Today we are not going to have a new history lesson. We've kind of uh, gone over a lot of stuff in the past few days and I wanted to kind of take this day to be a fun day, a little bit of a review game, and just kind of uh, enjoy ourselves a little. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Not too much learning here. Again, like I said, maybe a little bit of review, but uh, I've been getting some complaints from some students talking about how the historical accuracy of my lessons is questionable and let me just say in my room i have a time machine i mentioned this during the first video i believe and it is very easy to fact check with a time machine so i'm not sure you guys understand but most if not everything that i say is pretty damn true and I just kind of wanted to clarify that and I can fact check with a time machine. Maybe you guys have a time machine at home. Maybe you're working on your own model and uh, maybe you could dispute. But uh, I got some pretty hardcore evidence here where most things I say are relatively true. So I'm just kind of going to go off with that. And uh, today we are just going to kind of uh, enjoy ourselves a little bit. We are going to create the phalanx formation and we're just kind of going to do some opposing armies here between uh, some of our some of our all time favorites and just kind of create a couple of phalanx here and there. That's exactly what we're going to do. So just some block shapes. Uh, I was going to try and incorporate a thousand man peasant army against each other. Uh, unfortunately, that lesson was cut quite short. And uh, this is going to be a slightly different. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a triangular formation here with these guys. So we're going to actually combine not only the, uh, what is it? The formation, uh, the porcupine formation of our friends here in Greece, but we're also going to kind of utilize the triangular formation of some of the ancient Romans. So that's what we're doing here, just trying to utilize that a little bit. That's what we're going to get. And today the Romans will be battling the Egyptians in a battle for the ages. They will just have their chariots all over. Plenty of chariots. we got plenty of money to spend here. And uh, we will see how this goes. So without further ado, uh, today class, let us see who would win in an all-out Money has no expense between the Greeks using some Roman tactics on the left and the chariots. So, here we have it. An absolute death charge. And, uh, oh my god, it's like a... Oh, well, uh, they've been mowed down <laughs> quite effortlessly. And they continue to be mowed down. These spears are proving relatively futile. And it appears that there are only a few survivors left. However... It also appears that there is one chariot left again, an infamous ghost rider, I think. Yeah, and Red wins. Well, little round of applause there. Good job, Red, on the victory. Very proud of you guys. We're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna make this a best two out of three, because you know, uh, in battles sometimes the tides just turn. Things are a little bit different. Like here, oh god, oh god, oh well, sweet baby Jesus, that man is very very dead and if he's not he's transcended the third dimension probably transcended the fourth and uh i don't know what freaking dimension he's in at this point but i don't really want to know it's very hard to tell and it appears the greeks are continuing to win so spearmen were very effective they're them with their toothpicks were very effective against chariots and just kind of horsemen in general so this does make sense you know, it doesn't also... Oh, I just hit my mic on accident. I'm super sorry about that. Uh, after that is done, though, it is about time we pit them against the Napoleonic era and some cannon crews. And let's see how this goes. This should be a little bit more of a mode down. We're going to just kind of... We're just going to create a line of them here, right? And try to make sure that roughly the same amount is spent money-wise. About 4,000 makes sense. Let's spawn them in. Cannoneers, ready! Aim! You should really fire soon. There's like an angry mob of spearmen just coming at you. Dude, oh, sweet G. Oh, well, okay. It's all right. They continue their charge. Could this prove to be the most lethal of them all? It might. I mean, their numbers are slowly thinning out and there is some friendly fire on the Napoleonic side. However, uh, this it's, it's come down. It's very close. And Napoleon wins on the edge of his teeth. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, best two out of three. Just make sure everything's going well. And speaking of going well, hopefully you guys are having yourselves an awesome day. I hope you got a smile on your face. If you don't have a smile on your face, I hope you have a smile on your face by this video. And if you don't have a smile on your face, then I really hope you have one by the end of the day. So I want you guys to smile. I want you guys to be happy. I want you guys to have yourselves a good one. And uh, yeah, these cannoneers, man, they, uh, they're doing some damage. But I don't know. It might come down to the same thing. No, we might have to go to game three. 
wow, we might have to go to game three. This is this is very intense. This is actually going to be a close one, unlike the murder that was the chariots. All right, so we're going to continue here. We're going to play that again. And, oh, well, that man is... That man was flying. The, the cannon abandoned him. He didn't abandon the cannon. The cannon abandoned him. And, uh... The initial mow down, the most brutal of all things, and oh man, this this could be a manslaughter for the blues. Yeah, Napoleon might win this one very handily. Unless this red one is quite crafty with his friendly fire, which he might be. It's down to a no, it's not. I thought it was a 1v1. Still a 2v1, and he got shot in the back with a cannon. Well then, alright. Alright. Uh why don't we go? Let's, let's let's use some Roman tactics, shall we? How about we use ballistas this time? And to see how this goes. There we go. Line of ballistas. See how that goes. Well, if you guys are having an awesome day, and uh, I'm doing, I'm doing relatively good. Pretty chill day. Got back from Country Thunder, enjoying it. This is gonna be explosive. No, not even that bad. No, the Romans might lose yet again. The Greeks might be proven to be very superior. Eh, it's not looking good for him right now, actually. Uh, oh yeah, this is not looking good. There's bodies flying everywhere. When the bodies hit the floor. When the bodies hit. The that's the only song I can think of right now. Oh, well. Ripperoni. Ripperoni. Let's go. Game two. We'll see how this goes. But, yeah. Thank you guys for all the support lately on these videos. These videos have been doing really awesome. You guys really seem to enjoy them. And I love making them because just what this is the goofiest thing ever watching these guys battle. I just love the physics. I love physics games, man. Physics is awesome. Okay? Like, if you're in high school, you're taking a physics class, you might refute that. And to be honest, it's okay, I understand, I'm a history teacher after all, but, like, physics, you gotta respect it, I'm even teaching you guys some physics here, and, uh, it's just awesome, dude, I love it, I love it, look at this, look at this stuff, did that guy survive? Oh my god! Oh, yeah, no, he didn't survive that, he's, uh, very dead, that guy's about to be really dead, yeah, well, Ripperoni, that man is quite screwed, quite screwed, okay, okay, well, who else can we implore here, why don't we implore... Some barbarian tactics. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a good amount of barbarians here. Uh, we'll go up to 100. We'll go up until it's about roughly the same money-wise. And just get a block of barbarians. And uh, I know this is kind of talking in the future here. This is uh, kind of more Attila the Hun speak, that type of stuff. But for now, we're just gonna kind of use them here. Kind of talk a little bit. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So without further ado, best of luck. Hopefully uh, this isn't really bad. Uh, uh, it's kind of bad initially really laggy we might need to cut down our troops a little bit well maybe this will get better as the battle ensues because this is awful and uh oh my god it's like an angry mob is this what it looked like jesus christ they're just being swarmed i don't think the greeks were a match no wonder alexander died against attila look at this epic battle yeah this is not looking good it's not looking good in two ways and that the reds are losing in that and also i'm getting all of like two to three frames a second but seriously, thank you guys for enjoying these videos so much. I love making them. Just the support on them has been absolutely ridiculous. And it's awesome of you guys leaving those likes, leaving those comments. And it's just like, wow. Oh, no. They've begun to break into another dimension. Sweet Jesus. Well, that's no good. I'm not going to move this. These bodies are lagging my computer. And uh, these barbarians are running like derps. I believe those are the last two spearmen over there in the distance. Uh, I would love to move closer to them, but I would also love to keep my frames intact. It appears that man's leg is accidentally in another dimension. The rest of him's in this dimension. That leg, however, is uh, somewhere else. These barbarians are running into trees. It appears that those trees have done something very bad to wrong them. It's very hard to follow these guys with the limited resources I have. But I will try my darnest, and this guy's just running alone. And uh, we might need to call this a draw. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to thin their numbers a little bit here until it's about... Uh, we'll thin them down to 100 units. And hopefully this is a little bit nicer frame-wise. And uh, yeah, we're getting like... It's somewhat fluid. We might be able to... See, now we can kind of see this initial charge and see what goes down. And uh, oh, oh Jesus Christ, look at that. It's like a mosh pit. Looks like an EDM rave, man. Look at that. All those clubs just beating upon the Greeks. Jesus Christ, that is insane. Oh my God, well, clubs are flying everywhere. It appears the frames have gotten better after the life has disappeared from them. And uh, yeah, I mean, units wise, we got four barbarians left and what appears to be about four or five spearmen. So it's still relatively close. Spearmen, of course, being the more advanced and powerful unit, but they are stuck on these bodies and they might accidentally commit Sudoku, which is a common thing once you get stuck in these bodies. Uh, that spearman was 
just somehow managed to murder the barbarian who got the jump on him. And these spearmen do appear like, oh yeah, Jesus Christ, that dude was done with life. He's like, I'm done with it. Just throws his bat and collapses on the ground. And the barbarians are getting thinned out one by one. And the Greeks might prove superior. However, the Greeks were or not the, or yeah, the Greeks will prove superior. But the thing about the barbarians is that they were more known for just their mass amount of numbers and the fact that we cannot accurately represent that in even such an amazing simulator as TADS is uh, unfortunate so we might not know the full scope of this battle simply because it is not fair however to even it up what we will do is we'll give them a couple of catapults here right we'll thin out their numbers a little bit but we'll give them a couple of catapults hopefully try to even up the playing field and even give them a little bit of poachers here because the barbarian hordes were quite versatile in what they could do and we're gonna see how this goes so let's see how the horde can do uh, the cat the catapults might do a little bit of friendly fire unfortunately but uh, if they if they can take out the Reds man they're doing their job you know this reminds me of freaking red versus blue to say the least oh my god what has happened Jesus oh my god that was like a transdimensional bomb Freaking the singular catapult just destroyed everything. Oh my god. Oh my god. Body parts are in dimensions where they don't belong. This is awful. Oh my god. What a monstrosity. And it does appear. Well, we got our two poachers alive here. And they're trying to do some work. They're taking out our spearmen. Uh, it appears the catapults are pretty dead. And these poachers might ultimately be what win the... Uh, like. It's very hard to tell here. Very hard to tell. But I do believe it is a 2v1 right now. However, they are going over one of the most deadly parts of a battlefield, which is all the dead bodies, all the sharp objects, and uh, they got the headshot. That's one for the hordes, one for the Greeks, and uh, it's time for the tiebreaker, baby. It's time for the tiebreaker. Let's see how this goes. Let us see. All right. The initial clash where the most life is lost. Absolutely awful atrocity. The transdimensional bombs. They aren't breaking dimensions this time, luckily. At least not yet. It does appear that they are staying relatively within the rules of physics, which is always an important thing to follow in uh, war. And the barbarians are continuing their assault, and their those catapults, their ranged units, are proving insanely powerful. Like, look at that. That cannon. Ooh, that's another victory. That's two in a row. Even if we gave the Greeks another chance because they've all, we've only fought two battles like this so even given the Greeks that one victory where the barbarians were weaker barbarians still come out on top which is absolutely awesome now what we're going to that's that's a new level no new, I hit new game why do I keep doing that sandbox that's what I wanted all right time for 90 v 90 horde like peasant wise I don't want anything to be super laggy here but Without further ado, let's see how the peasants clash. Not a thousand versus a thousand. That was a ridiculous hope of mine. Don't know why I thought that that would work, but... Peasants, charge! How's the charge going? I don't really know. Well, it does appear that it, there's just a giant mosh pit. It looks like the yin and the yang there in the middle. Look at that. Just, they're just fighting for balance, for control, and there's punches being thrown everywhere. This is just like amazing that we get to see history go down through the eyes of a true observer of their time period. Now these peasants could very well be from any any time period. I mean, peasants are peasants, right? Everyone's a peasants. They're just kind of run of the mill, usual usual stuff. Now the initial body count is lost. Now they're continuing to slap each other and uh I don't know if that's bear hugs or affectionate hugs, but they're continuing to do damage to each other. And we got these guys running around in their polygonal greatness. This man with his googly guy, googly eye greatness, being chased by the reds, and oh, there's about to be a confrontation, or is there? No, there might not be. However, oh, here, the reds have come out surprisingly on top for some reason, and oh my god, what they did to that man is not legal in most states. And now there are two blues left wandering, trying to find sanctuary, trying to find victory, but victory is not a thing within their grasp. And unfortunately for them, um, it's not looking good. The Reds have numbers. They survived this assault quite well. But the Blues have an advanced tactic up their sleeve. The flee tactic. Where they flee from battle in circles. It's quite useful. And it is. it might prove to actually wear out the Reds. And if they use the stockpile of bodies well, they might even be able to take out the Reds in this risky trap that... The two armies 
have created. However, you do have to be careful when utilizing that trap because there is always, you run the risk that you might die in it. And, uh, oh, here we got the confrontation. Finally, one of the blues. He's taking it. Oh, oh. No. He's over. There's one blue left amongst a sea of reds and dead blues and dead reds, but mostly reds. And it is not looking good for him. He's tripping up on the bodies. He's, he might be getting caught in his comrades. He wants them. He's trying to perform some kind of satanic ritual to bring them back to life, but his satanism is not strong enough. And it does appear he will be swarmed and barring a miracle, the reds will come out on top in a true battle for the ages. Now, speaking of rebellions today, to end off this episode, you're going to demonstrate a rebellion between Egyptians. Now we're gonna say here the army of Egypt is having a revolution and of they're vying for power. Okay, so what we're gonna have here is we're gonna demonstrate what that would look like. We're gonna grab some chariots here, right? Plenty of chariots, just create two lines of chariots each. And we're gonna see what this is gonna look like and see what could possibly happen. Chariots? Wow, oh my god, it's just the literally, oh my god, the head of that horse, no! Yeah, well, this is, uh, don't know what I expected. I mean, yeah, this is, uh, interesting. Oh, some have escaped. Wow, look at that. Wow, just, just so many wheels and dead horses and decapitated horses. This is truly awful. I don't even know, like, if they're ghost riders. We don't, oh my god, that one's a set. Well, red won. We'll say red is the rebels, because red, rebel, kind of close there. We're going to play this through, and let's see. Will the rebels revolutionize Egypt? Why is it in slow motion? Is that a thing I can do? Oh my god, literally everything just flies everywhere. Is slow motion a thing? For real, is slow motion a thing? I swear to god, that just happened and I don't know how. Slow motion is a thing. Oh, we are gonna have some slow motion battles. Is this where the rest of the battle is going on? I don't even see colors at this point, man. Blue. Okay, so they're able to stomp down the rebellion and now it all comes down to this final battle to see who will be the new Cleopatra of Egypt. The new Pharaoh. The new... I don't know, dude. I, I, just, I just do battles. I'm not like an actual historian. I'm a battle historian. It's way cooler, right? Something like that. I don't know. That's why, you know... All right. Again, giant stockpile of doom and death. I mean, those are pretty. Those words are pretty close to each other anyway, so... Uh, wow, everything's just running around. And the Reds have won. The Rebellion has exceeded. Kind of hard to see there. My bad about that, but... The Rebellion did succeed, and hopefully you guys enjoyed today's review game, and just kind of review day. Hopefully you were able to kind of sharpen up your knowledge over our last few lessons, and uh, tomorrow we will probably be returning back to our normal history plan and continue with that. But, students, if there is any type of specific civilizations you would like to learn about, please in the comment section down below let me know. And also, for next next time, next time we have a review game, probably after three or four more history lessons, let me know what's up, if there's anything that's particular you'd like to review. I would very much so appreciate that. And uh, speaking of appreciating, I seriously appreciate you guys with just the support on these videos. It's been crazy how much you guys have loved this, and I love making it for you guys because of that fact that you love it so much. And it's, it's just a goofy, fun game. It's just great. So I'm going to hopefully catch up on our history lesson here since I accidentally burned my history lesson planner. But uh, we'll get back up to the level 10 lesson we were at and take things from there. And uh, seriously, thank you guys for all the likes and comments. It's been awesome. And speaking of awesome, hopefully you guys have yourselves an awesome day. Hopefully this video helped make it more awesome. And if it didn't, well, hopefully something. You go out and do something, make it more awesome. And at the end of the day, you can say... Today was a good day. All right, make Ice Cube proud. But other than that, it is really about going to go ahead and do it for me. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in what will probably be tomorrow's history lesson.